Hi everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Pixplicity Talks. If you've seen our previous episode, you already know a little bit about Bluetooth Low Energy. Today we're going to dive in further into the world of the beacons. I'm going to tell you what they are, what you can do with them, and how you can make an Android app that communicates with a beacon. Beacons are little Bluetooth low energy devices. I've got one over here. They transmit a little signal containing an identifier, and using the signal strength you can determine how far away the beacon is. They not super they are not super cheap. The, those little blue ones are about 10 bucks each, but they range up to 100 bucks per beacon. Now what can you do with those things? Well, for example, you can attach one to your keychain and find your keys when you've lost them by finding out how to get closer to them. You can also stick a few in a room and using a special app you can find your location indoors, which is useful because GPS doesn't work that good indoors. There are many different types of beacons, different brands. There are alt beacons, eye beacons, gimbals and many others. And they all differ in little ways, but what they all have in common is that they have a UUID, which is an identifier to know which, which beacon is which, and they have at least two numbers, a major and a minor. You can use those to differentiate between different beacons. For example, uh, if you're hosting an event in a big building, you can use different beacons that all have the same UUID. You can make an app that checks for that UUID, but every room has a different major and minor number. So that way you can track, for example, in which room of the building you are. There are many small differences between the data packages that those beacons uh, can contain, but uh, most brands supply their own SDK anyway, so I'm not really going to dive into the details of all of those. I am going to tell you a little bit about the alt beacon library, which is compatible with a lot of different beacons and therefore the most useful. First thing we're going to do is include some lines in our Gradle script to ensure the library is imported. Next, we're going to add some lines to our manifest file to make sure that we have the Bluetooth permission. Next, we'll go to the activity or fragment or service where you want to detect the beacons. Here, you'll have to implement the beacon consumer. You, this way you can receive a callback that I'll explain later on. First, we're going to initiate a search for beacons. We can do this, for example, in the onCreate. We'll do this the following way. First, we'll get an instance of the beacon manager and next we'll bind the beacon manager to the activity or fragment or service that we're in. This way we'll receive a callback in the onBeaconServiceConnect method. Here we can do some interesting things. We set, for example, a monitor notifier on the beacon manager, which will notify us of certain events. Those events include when your phone enters a region or exits a region or lingers in a region. Those regions can be defined by the beacons. For example, several beacons with the same UUID are together one region. To initiate this monitoring, we'll first create a new region object in which we'll include the, U, the UUID that we're looking for and we'll pass this region on to the method start monitoring beacons in region of the beacon manager. Once you've done this, the monitoring will start and you'll receive notifications. Alternatively, you might want to know the actual distance to a beacon. To find this out, the code resembles what you've seen before, but instead of a monitor notifier, we'll use a range notifier. First, we'll set a not range notifier object on the beacon manager, and then, much like the other method before, we'll create a region again with the UUID and pass it on to start ranging beacons in region. This way, we'll get an update every now and then called did range beacons in region, which contains the region and the distance to the region. So let's have another look at the keychain example. Let's say you have one of those attached to your keychain and you've lost, you lost your keys. Now, if you know the UUID of the beacon, you can create an app that uses the range notifier and tells you how far you are from your keychain. So you can update the UI which tells you hotter or colder how far away your keys are until you found them. So in short, all you have to do is the following. Implement the beacon consumer, bind to the beacon manager, and then in your callback methods you can either set a monitor notifier, a range notifier, or even both. 
And don't forget to unbind again from the beacon manager, which you can usually do in the undestroy of your activity or fragment or service. Perhaps you've also heard of URI beacons or URI beacons. Those are special beacons that instead of a little data package and a UUID, they contain a URL or a URI. This is a fundamentally different uh, concept because you can do totally different things with it. With conventional iBeacons, the app that communicates with the beacons has to know the exact UUID to know what to look for or what to do with the beacons. So any app can deduct information from it. Which is nice because depending on your needs, you might not actually have to program a dedicated app to be able to use your URI beacon. That's it for now. This concludes our short series about Bluetooth Low Energy. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. I hope to see you next time. See ya!